In this section, we're going to be discussing web service data sources. And the sample that we're going to be building is something like this, where we'll be uh, picking up some uh, current weather conditions for a city that we enter. We'll get some uh, trend temperatures, and then we'll also um, be getting some information about some cocktails, which may or may not suit the weather. Um, to do that, we'll be using three uh, web different web services. We'll be using one to populate the form, another one to populate a chart, and a third to populate a list view. Now, uh, web service APIs are very, very popular and massively powerful. Uh, but the important thing about them is that you understand how to use them and their expected output before you start to try and integrate them into uh, a data source within uh, App Designer. And the reason, again, is very similar to the, the SQL custom stuff. Uh, if you can't get the response back from that you're expecting from a, a, an API without using App Designer, then there's no way that App Designer is going to be able to make it work magically. Now, to help do that, um, I use a couple of um, uh, things. The first one is a product called Postman. Um, and this allows you to build collections of web service calls. Um, it will analyze um, the call. You can make the call here. You can put in all sorts of keys and attributes and all sorts of bits and pieces. Um, and you can see the return value. And, and in this instance, it's an example of calling the cocktail app. Um, it's passing a, a value um, on the query of an A. So it's actually doing a search for all cocktail names beginning with an A. And this is the JSON response back. Um, knowing that this call works in Postman, a, a product work that's designed to analyze and help you call APIs, and you can see the full URL being passed there. If you're able to mimic that URL within the App Designer, then you know that you are going to be getting this response back. Um, now, uh, where do you get this sort of information? Well, all APIs that have ever come across, certainly in the public domain, publish yards and yards of manuals and online help. And here is an example from Open Weather um, API. And, you know, there are samples. Some APIs, like the Cocktail One, I think, publishes Postman collections um, and all sorts of, of things. But the key element, as I say, if we go, go back a little bit, is to make sure that by hook or by crook, you understand how to make the call and what the response is before you go any further with App Designer. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing now is starting to build our um, little app. But before we do that, I want to go into the web service data source and go through uh, each of the component parts so that you begin to understand how it actually hangs together and what you're able to do with it. And then we'll come back out again and start to build uh, our app. So I'm going to nip into here, add a web service, and we'll just put something in like my test to begin with. Okay, so the, the only option is web service. So basically the this uh, these set of properties are built into two halves really. Um, there's there's a there's a, a section which in effect um, works to build a full HTTP request, which we will see here. And then there's some configuration to say, well, uh, once I've got an answer back from the web service or what format do you want it? So let's actually ha have a look. Um, the HTTP method, um, those of you are familiar with them, typically a get is the same as a query, but it'll ha handle post, put and delete. But we'll be concentrating on the get HTTP method. Normally, a, um, a web service will have a base URI, uh, which is the, the sort of core of the um, uh, HTTP, HTTP request. And then added to that, there will be a, a method and optionally a query string or HTTP headers. Now, let me explain. Um, if you are simply calling uh, a, a web URL, um, and you want to do a query, you've got to have a way of passing data to the query to say, well, I want, for instance, the, the weather for Johannesburg or the weather for Manchester. Um, so how do you get that information to the web service? There are two ways. Um, one of them is on a query string, and we'll see that shortly. And the other one is on what they call HTTP headers. Um, query string clearly 
is a text string that's human readable um, and the headers are not and they are transmitted um, on the call. So and we will be having a look at uh, both those. Once um, we've got our URL sorted out and we know what we're doing, we need to tell um, our um, app designer web uh, data source what response to expect it, and, and it'll be one of two it'll be xml or json um, and clearly that's important uh, some web a apis you'll find that you can dictate which which format you want but um, we handle both once you've got um, the uh, in inbound xml uh, uh, response format we need to define well what output do you actually want and again it's uh, xml or json so this is controlling um, uh, how you want to handle the web API uh, data coming back into your VB script or your application. And if it's XML, um, then we have a number of options. We can simply have no formatting, which means um, I'm just simply going to take the output from um, a web service and I'm just going to pass it straight through to you. So you might be using a uh, data source execute command and you just simply want the XML into your program, not a problem at all. Um, and then we've got a number of other options, just like the other um, data sources, we're able to format the data to populate a form, a list view or a chart. Um, so if we just choose that for a minute and then if it's a form, we have to say, right, well, we have to let it know where, what's the node that you are going to find the data in. And we'll be, again, we'll be looking at that. But for instance, on the weather uh, um, app, you may well find that it's kind of slash weather slash, I don't know, today and, and so on. So you navigate down to the relevant node in your um, uh, response to be able to do the format. Um, and then the, there is another option called flattened XML. And I'll be showing you uh, some of these working and what flattening the XML means is that if you're getting a response back and, and the weather format is, is an absolute classic where um, some of the data is in attributes, some of them are in uh, uh, XML elements and some of the elements are about three deep, uh, it's a real pain um, to try and unpack them and make them e you know easily usable in a form. So we're providing a mechanism where you can actually sort of say, irrespective of the structure, um, it'll flatten it into a, a, a root node and then every bit of attributes and elements will be an element below those. Um, here we have a service description. It's quite useful to be able to um, describe for people following on why you're using and what does it do. There we've got our um, standard um, options, properties for data sources, whether we execute it or not. Um, we can put a notification message in here um, and then um, some default placeholders and I'll we'll talk about those when we, we come to it. So um, for a start of a 10, we just got one example. Um, we just pop it in here um, and that is the, the syntax for the weather uh, app and I'll just go and describe that to you now. This sample uh, shows how to call the weather app and we'll be using a variant of this in our sample a little bit later on. Uh, but I'll just go through now and maybe some of the things I spoke about earlier on will become a little bit clearer. We're using the HTTP GET method, so that's a query. Our base URI is this one, Open Weather App Org Data 2.5. Um, we're going to be invoking the weather method of that uh, API and we're going to be passing the following parameters to that method. So um, if we have a look here, um, we are passing percent key percent, which from an app ID, app ID app designer point of view um, is the key. Uh, in our case, it'll be the city. Um, and then there is an app ID, which is a unique, uh, the equivalent of an ID, uh, like a, a license number or an account number, uh, which I got when I registered on the site. Um, and then we're um, defining what the return format will be. Now, this app ID here is a, a free one. You get, if you register with the site, you get allocated it. 
and and it's restricted use basically x number of calls in in a number of hours if you intend to use this weather service yourselves then i would recommend that you don't use my key um, but you 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 register and use your own but uh, that's that's an aside so basically we take the uri we take the method we take the parameters and uh, it, it constructs this um, http request which will be passed through to um, the api that http request should be the same as the one you see in postman or whatever tool you decided to test this on before you got to this stage obviously our xml is going to our response type is going to be xml because we've told it to in this example and we want our output in in xml so i just want to clarify one thing about http headers and the query string in this instance the query string um, or the, the parameters being passed to the URI are on the the uh, the URI itself, and they're human readable. Um, HTTP headers um, are key value pairs, so it might be something like Andy, or in fact it could be something like um, app ID, and then da -da 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 -da, something like that. And and that that key and that value will be transmitted to the API. Um, not on the URI, but uh, as part of the connection string, completely um, uh, invisible. And bearing in mind that you can, at this stage here, use things like full name caption, toolbar ID, get variable name, and you can also get global variables, and you can also get data store um, variables as well. So you could store the uh, app ID in the data store and retrieve it on the call. So it's completely and utterly invisible. I won't bother saving that. So I hope that explains that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at running the test web service. Now, if I press test web service and there are uh, parameters in the URI or in the headers, which it can't resolve, it will come and ask us to enter some data for those. To help testing, uh, certainly on the keys, you can use default placeholders. Um, and in this case, I'm saying I've got a single key called London and there's a 1% key percent, so it's gonna put the word London in there. It just helps testing um, the web service. It's not used for anything else at all, but it just helps life. Right, I've been tinkering away at our app, um, all, all the things that I've been doing we've covered in the courses to date so you haven't missed anything basically file exit combo here slight difference to our normal combo in that um, I've actually manually entered a list here obviously you could populate it from from somewhere else if you wanted to that's not a, a problem and then a help um, button that fires up this help uh, page here so Basically, uh, let's have a quick look at the data sources. The weather service was is identical to the one that we were using. Um, we just happen to be saying that we want it for a form. Um, we've keyed in a little bit of a description um, to describe it for anybody uh, coming back. And then um, the key hold, the, the placeholder for testing is London. So no different from what we've just been through now. Um, the historical weather data, it's slightly different because it's a different to service you can see there's the base uri the method here is something called timeline and um unusually um the there's a, a variable being passed on the method rather than on the query string but that's the way it works so that's what we have to do and so we take the base uri we take the method and the variable we take the query string and we create uh, one enormous http request uh, which I repeat should match the ones in whatever testing you've got. Notice at the end here, um, it's type equals JSON. So we um, respond back saying it's JSON we're receiving. We want it back in um, XML. And this time what we're saying is we want the format appropriate to a, a um, uh, app designer chart. And if we test this service, we will see that we will get um, the data flattened for us and it's in rows and rows of data. So you can see that for a chart, you can pick out a number and, and drill downs and all sorts of bits and pieces like that. So that's relatively straightforward. 
And then with the cocktail app, very, very similar as, as well as well. It's still a get. There's our base URI. There's our method. Um, query string um, is percent key percent. It's actually going to be a search for all um, cocktails beginning with an A. Um, and again, from a list view point of view, if we test that, we will get it row by row by row to populate a, a, a list view. So this is what the uh, app designer data sources are doing, taking that data um, from the um, API and formatting it. If just as an a, as a, out of interest, if we say no formatting here and we test the web service, you see it's a huge amount of, of data. Um, different um, formats and elements and things like that as well. And uh, if we provided it in JSON format, it will also change it. So we'll just change that back. Um, so those are those are the data sources that we've actually set up. So let's now go and first of all, add our form and see if we can't get that working. Let's add our form then. And we want to call it something like weather in information. Okay, that's fine. It's not a dialog box. So what we actually want to do is go down to binding, select fields from, and we were going to do it for the weather service. So we've now got a list of all the elements coming back from our API. Just as an aside, what's hap actually happened is it's done a call out to that um, API using those default keys. And now it can um, uh, give us these back. So we want uh, city name, uh, temperature value, and unit. I'm just going down a, a spec here, um, city country. Sunrise, sunset. Wind speed value. Wind speed unit. Visibility value. Pressure value. Pressure unit. And city time zone. OK, so we can add these selected items. There they go, just as before. No different from, from using the other uh, ones. I'm just going to move a few of these around now to match our spec. Temperature value. Um, then we've got country. That'll do, I think. We'll just leave it at that, otherwise I'll be messing around for ages. Okay, so what we've got to do now is we need to wire up um, the running of that data service from, or the, the data source from the combo. So we come to the combo, and we basically say data sources to execute, and we want the weather service. We apply that, and we run our app, see what happens. OK, here's our little app. We will choose Johannesburg. There we go. So it's done all the bits and pieces, got the data back, populated it. So let's go and add our uh, chart and see what happens. I've added the uh, chart for us, our weather forecast chart, and I've been through a variety of chart properties, setting the fonts, the palette, the appearance. There's only going to be one diagram on one series because we're only going to be mapping well, one thing. There's a variety of other bits, diagram directions that really matter. We're not showing a legend. You can tinker with these to your heart's content. And those of you who've done um, the, uh, I think, course two, where we went through the chart control, there's all sorts of bits and pieces you can do here. It's really quite a, a fascinating control. Um, so down here on the uh, y-axis, we're, we're monitoring temperature. Um, and down here in the series, we've got select series that we're choosing our style uh, and, um, and label format and things like that. To get the angled dates here, um, we use angled labels option 
there. And so the next thing to do is actually to bind the data to this. So we basically say we want to bind to the historical data, which is great. Um, what label do we want to use? Well, we want date time on the bottom um, and we want to plot uh, temperature. Um, and then so now the chart understands where it's getting its data from, what it's got to chart. The only thing to do is when do we fire this data source or we go back to our combo and data sources to execute. We will check that and apply it and we'll run our app. So here we are, we will check Johannesburg. And there you go. So there's our first web API, there's our second API call. So what we want to do now um, is we're going to bob in something on the bottom to bang up a few cocktails to show you the third uh, web service call. I've added a list view at the bottom here, um, and we have added a uh, uh, toolbar button here. In fact, it's an edit field. Um, so caption a search letter, there's the event ID, should we ever need it? Bit of a tool tip. Um, and that's about it. Just be careful with the, um, the width. If you make it too short, then you get this kind of behavior. Um, if we make it 100, that will be fine. It's basically controlling this size of the edit button and the text there. There's our tooltip popping up, which is great. So basically what we need to do now is go to the list view details um, and we need to go down to binding. Now, remember that uh, we've got to bind the list view to a data source. So there's we're going to go for a web data source and we are going to select cocktail, which is good. Um, it's going to be looking for a primary node of row, which is what comes back from um, the uh, data sources anyway. Um, we go to columns and we will have the drink, an alcohol, glass, and maybe mixing instructions, and we add those selected items, which is looking good. Um, so they're all bound. If we click on these, though, because the captions on the columns aren't very good, and we can see here, so we can change the caption to name. And it's still bound to STR drink look. And we will change that to type, I think it's alcoholic or non-alcoholic. Glass style. And then we'll do mixing instructions there. So that's looking quite good. Um, so the only other thing we need to do now is to tell the list view when to execute it. So we come down here, um, refresh list view on event. We're going to say it's going to be a toolbar executed event and which control do we want to do it. It's going to be our search letter, which is 1401. So that should be that. So let's um, run our app. Okay, so we'll do our Johannesburg bit. Great, and we'll key in an A here. And there we go, hey presto. So, there's our little app knocked up. Let's go and have a look at um, the VB script that we've used. There you go, none. Quite amazing, really. So you've called three web services, you've populated a form, a chart and a list view, and written not one line of code. Um, pretty impressive, I think, actually. So um, let's move on. Well, that's the end of our session on web service data sources. I find them absolutely quite fascinating. And the amount of information and systems you can find on the Internet never ceases to amaze me. But I think its key use is as an integration tool to third party systems or third-party data stores that you can pull into your CISPRO user interface. I um, hope it's given you plenty of food for thought. The next section we'll be doing is just running over some of the call-out functions that allow you to manipulate the data sources within VBScript. So I'll see you in the next section.